We are now on Twitter versus George Not Found Part 6. So throughout this video, if you feel like there's any context missing or you're out of the loop on something, go back and watch the previous parts in order to get caught up. But continuing on from Part 5, Katie Bugs makes a third and final response to George Not Found in an hour-long Twitch livestream she did. I tried to cut it down to just the essential parts, but a lot of what she said was important, so the segment I'm about to show is going to be pretty long, but I will leave a chapter down below if you want to skip right to the Twittery actions. Anyways, here's what she said. The one biggest thing that I want to clear up, it is fucking sexual assault. I'm not going to apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching that he is admitting, has admitted to many times, this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did, he felt up my tits on a couch with other people there. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up, fondled, whatever you want to say. He felt up my tits. Unwanted sexual touch is literally in the definition of sexual assault. It's fucking sexual assault, and I'm never going to apologize for saying it is, okay? Uh, it isn't fake allegations. It's not fake allegations. I'm not a liar. Hi, Quite literally, the thing that I was talking about three. is my sexual assault. And that's the one thing he confirmed. He can sit there and confirm that he did it. And I'm still sat here getting called a liar, getting called a fake victim, getting called, what was it? A slut and a prude at the same time. Uh, and quite frankly, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, I'm not gonna stand down. Luckily, I'm not scared to say it anymore. Um, that's it. It's sexual assault. He felt up my tits. This touching that he's talking about, that's what it is, okay? No, I'm not upset that he tickled me. I'm not saying that he assaulted me because he tickled me or because he was close to me. No, I'm upset because I was on a couch, 18 years old, drunk, on a couch with other people in the room, and he sticks up his hand and starts feeling my tits. That's what I'm... That's That was my fucking story. No, he didn't ask if I wanted it. But somehow, he had enough energy to ask the question, are you ticklish? Which I responded with, no. I'm not fucking ticklish. Uh, and that's what led to him feeling up my tits. He will never understand uh, that feeling when I realized this wasn't just a bunch of people hanging out on a couch together, a bunch of friends hanging out, when it was inherently a sexual thing. And that instead of just a bunch of friends on a couch together, I was being wanted for my body. No, he would have never felt my uncomfort because he was too busy feeling something else that night. The amount of miscommunication, misinformation that is spreading is one of the biggest reasons. I feel like I just don't even really have anything to say anymore because, I mean, I was reading my own story on Twitter and I was reading it and I didn't even know it was my story they were talking about until they said my name because of how skewed everything's gotten. It's like this huge game of telephone where each time it gets a little bit more off but no one's acknowledging that they could have heard wrong and they're yelling what they heard as loud as possible. Okay, people saying I'm trying to ruin a man's career because he tickled me, or like, or especially, he did not rape me either. Like, it's it's so important to hear what I'm saying. There is something I'm fully owning up to and, and clearing up right now. The screenshot, that was a complete miscommunication. There's a screenshot I said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault, mentioned our ages and acknowledged, you know. The situation was weird. It's a real screenshot. What I got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from. It was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault, it was from the girl who wasn't there for the assault. Um, which I acknowledge is frustrating that I got that wrong and I didn't realize I got it wrong until after I posted it. And obviously when I don't come out and say, oh, I got that wrong, when he's the one to come out and say she got that wrong, it cr makes that into the biggest deal. I got a message from the girl that actually sent the text and was like, it was a while after I already posted my response and was like, you kind of mixed up who the text was from, but I'm sure it won't be a big deal because it was only one of the minor things you said uh, and everything else you said in that response was way more important. 
which obviously we've seen uh, that was not the case. But I do acknowledge and own up to the fact that I completely was wrong about that. But again, I'm saying even though it wasn't from his friend, it was yet another person in the hotel room that acknowledged the weirdness. Yes, it wasn't from that guy in the hotel room. It was from the girl in the hotel room. Like, I still think the situation, the screenshot, it's not a fake screenshot as well. It's a real screenshot. I still think it adds to the fact of, you know, people acknowledged it. Also, the fact that I said I was freshly 18, which is something a lot of people are mad about, when in reality, I was 18 and five months old. My bad. Uh, what I meant to say in that original stream where I said I was freshly 18, I said I was freshly 18 and just out of high school. What I meant to say was I was 18 and freshly out of high school. I just put it in front of the wrong thing. And I do acknowledge that. Uh, but once again, I feel like the idea is still the same, whether it's freshly 18 or freshly out of high school, because I had just graduated a few weeks earlier. The idea is still there. It's still there. I'm sorry, I do get frustrated with that because people are mad at me saying that I'm a liar because of these things instead of acknowledging the fact that he fucking admitted to doing what he did to me. And we're worried about the fact that I, was, I said I was freshly 18 when I meant to say I was freshly out of high school. And for the people saying he was drunk too, so he didn't consent. I didn't fucking feel up his tits. What did he not consent to? I would like to make it clear. There was no reciprocation in any sexual act. The sexual act that happened was not reciprocated. The only thing he could have not consented to was him putting his own hand on my tits. I didn't touch him after that. I didn't touch him sexually before that. There was nothing for him to content or consent to sexually. I understand that could be an argument, not for this situation. The hypocrisy that has surrounded this situation is fucking insane. I'll get into just the blaming of me uh, that is insane. I just can't do anything uh, in this situation. I mean, I came about it out about it publicly and I was called an attention seeking slut. So then I'm like, fine, I privated all my things so I can receive followers, receive clout. You know, I couldn't grow from this. I've privated everything. So I can't gain that. Uh, and then I'm told I'm hiding from everything and that I should go public. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I cry on my stream because I'm scared and I'm talking about my assault. I cry and then I'm told I'm embarrassing, that I'm doing it for attention, that I'm a pick me, that I'm dramatic. But if I sat there and I didn't cry, I know I would have been called a liar, soulless, heartless, you know, a sociopath. You can't do anything right in these situations, and it's fucking insane. For people saying take legal action, do you know the odds of winning an assault case? Like, there's a reason. There's a, one out of three girls are assaulted in their lives, okay? There's a reason so many of them don't come out about this. The system, you would like to believe that it's always for you. The amount of fucking injustice that happens with our system is insane. It's absolutely insane. And you sit here and see someone come out about their story and your immediate thing is, well, take it up with the law. Like that will serve any justice. So fuck you. The amount of people telling me how I felt or the amount of people believing from his mouth how I felt instead of just fucking hearing me say how I felt. It's insane. And the fact that if I have inconsistencies in my story, which I do, and I'm not gonna say I don't. I'm like remembering the night of my assault and I'm sorry, but the thing that I really remembered is the assault. I didn't remember, you know, like if a person who wasn't there for the assault left at a certain time, I'm, I remembered my assault. I will acknowledge that there are inconsistencies, but when I have inconsistencies in my story and I address them and I acknowledge it, my whole story's out. It's in the trash and I'm seen as a liar for inconsistencies. But when he has an inconsistency or when, you know, even the 21 Brisbane thing saying I had a band that said I was, you know, when he has an inconsistency and I prove it wrong, have video footage of it, it's still used against me to this day. 
his inconsistencies are taken as the holy fucking grail and as the truth, even when proved wrong. And when I have an inconsistency, my whole fucking everything I've said uh, is gone. And I also understand the idea that we have different point of views. Obviously, we're going to have different point of views of that night. Otherwise, what happened wouldn't have happened. Um, I don't understand believing the one point of view over the other. And again, even the fact that we have different point of views, the one thing we agree on, the one thing that we agree on is the fact that he touched me and didn't ask if I was okay with it. That's what I came out about, and that's what he agreed with. The fact of him saying I painted him in a bad light. I'm talking about my assault. <laughs> I'm not gonna paint it in a fucking rainbows and sunshine light. I'm saying I used word choices that painted him bad, but then he says stuff like, oh, we cuddled before. Cuddling can be taken, and I watched it be taken and ran with. He says we cuddled, and people are like, you can't get mad at what he did to you because you were lying on top of him and all up on him before it happened. I wasn't. We were on a couch, sitting up, sitting up. We were all on a couch. Everything and anything you could consider cuddling, I saw that as a friendly, like, drunk, what you do with your friends. I was doing it with my best friend that was right next to me as well, you know? Um, and again, I believed we any you, touches KT. were more initiated by him. But again, that's just hearsay. Just using words like that, it can be taken and ran with. It wasn't anything sexual, and I still, I believe it was pretty tame, you know? Uh, I didn't, again, believe that it was an invitation for anything sexual or that it would lead to anything sexual, especially it being in front of a bunch of people. For the people saying I'm an attention seeker, I think genuinely when people come out about these kind of things um, is insane that people believe that. Anyone who has genuinely came out about a true story uh, that has happened to them, they know that this attention is the worst attention you could possibly ever get. I've lost the love for something that I've spent so long on because of all of this. Everything that I've worked for since I was 16, on this account, you know, under this name, everything that I've worked for is overshadowed by this. When you look up my name, this is what it is. I'm fucking defined by this now, you know? And there's no coming back from that. Why, why would I want that? My trauma and what I've been through has become drama and clickbait and just another discussion topic to argue with each other on Twitter. Why would I want any of this? Um, I will tell you guys why I came out about it later, but I didn't, I, this is not the attention anyone would want. Um, and if someone does want attention like this, they're fucking insane. I I've always wanted, you know, to connect with more people and to you know, my content to be known more, but I don't want it to become more well known because I was assaulted. Um, and I hope you guys can also understand that. So both sides of the attention I'm getting, it's just, again, it's nothing I would ever want. And again, why would I come out about this? For more clout? I don't want to fucking do content. What, what am I going to do with the clout? Um, I don't know what my future holds, but I don't, want a career in content or anything like that as much as i'm glad so many people are connecting with me and you know feeling better about themselves it hurts seeing how many people can relate it hurts hearing the stories people are coming out with it's great and i love the response that people feel safe to come out about their stories it hurts how many there are it further sets in my mind that i would do this again no matter how many fucking names I'm called, even if I have to disappear from the internet, I would do it all again. Seeing how many people it has helped and the space that it's created for other content creators to come out about their stories. As for his response, I don't have much to say. To me, it's very clear what's going on, but I know it may not be for a lot of people. And I could have, e could have even understood if it would have been a I know we have different perspectives of the night, and I know I, I assume stuff that I shouldn't have, but I'm still sorry for hurting you, period. But anytime, again, he readmits to the fact that he touched me without consent, it's followed with a but. 
It's followed with a, yes, I touched you. Yes, I didn't ask if it was okay. But you were smiling. But you seemed like you would have wanted it. But I assumed you wanted it because I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of the but. Not even just that. It's then put into this video where the entire video is picking apart my story once again. Picking apart every single thing I said. And once again, focusing thing on things that are irrelevant to the fact that you fucking touched me. I mean, being like, whoa, she said my friend left early, but really he left late. What the fuck does that have to do with you touching me and not asking first? What the fuck? Your friend wasn't there when it happened. Oh, this is all the stuff she left out. She left this out because she can't be trusted and is leaving important info out. I left out the two people that were in that room that weren't there for my assault. I was talking about my assault. They weren't there for it. Why would I? It He's put in this position, right, to pick out every inconsistency and especially pick out any information I didn't mention and to put it on a silver platter and be like, here, here's everything that she was kind of wrong about and here's everything she left out so she can't be trusted. And because I'm the one pointing it out, you can trust me. Because I'm the one putting it out there for you, you can trust me. He conveniently didn't acknowledge my age despite the numerous opportunities. He conveniently didn't acknowledge the power imbalance. He conveniently doesn't remember these things. I mean, and then he says stuff like, well, I'm a good guy. Obviously, he's gonna fucking say that. You think that if he genuinely is the person to kind of be like this, that he would go on an edited fucking video and be like, yeah, I'm a bad guy. Yeah, I purposefully, oh yeah, I knew her age. He's not gonna say that. He has a fucking career to protect. He's gonna say whatever the fuck he needs to. He has so much at stake. I have fucking nothing left. Like, it is so, it's obvious to me the kind of people that, that these people are. He can get on a video and sit there and admit to touching me without consent and then he can bury it. He brings up all these screenshots, all these different details that are irrelevant in the night. He brings this up on purpose. So that's what you guys talk about. He brings up, oh, well, these are texts from Dream and Ghosty. Why do I fucking care about text between Dream and Ghosty? When I'm talking about you fucking touching me. He brings up these texts and he brings up these, this irrelevant stuff to distract you guys. He's distracting you guys. He's bringing this up to be like, here, look at this. Here, debate this. Here, talk about this. Oh, and by the way, I did touch her and I didn't ask. And yes, that's the thing she's coming out about that I'm confirming. But look at this. In my first video, I confirmed, I came out about the fact that, about the messages, but him saying, let's switch from Instagram DMs to go to Snapchat. What is, what is the point of texting on Snapchat versus Instagram? The only reason we didn't continue on Snapchat is because I didn't want to continue there. But in the middle of a convo being like, let's switch to Snapchat, where messages and pictures disappear. I mean, I just feel like these kinds of people are so smart and so calculated. I feel like it's so obvious. Every source that he's getting, if you've noticed anytime he says, well, she seemed comfortable, and I even asked, the person he's getting to confirm his point of view is his best friend. Or the guy that he called in the video, again, his friend. Three guys that were there, the one guy I didn't mention, and the other two are all friends. <laughs> he says, well, she wasn't uncomfortable. Well, she seemed like she was fine. And I asked Dream about this. That's his best friend that is helping him make these videos. He is quite literally helping him and sending him stuff to make these videos, these edited responses that he's making. He's making them with Dream, like, and then he's using Dream as a, a source to tell if I was okay or not. I mean, and, and this friend whose career is also on the line because they've built their careers together. If he goes down, they both go down. They're obviously gonna back each other up. And I do acknowledge, this is me acknowledging I can also be a hypocrite in this situation because I had a best friend there. Obviously, my best friend was there. So it's these three guys who were friends and then me and my best friend. But I would also like to point out the two girls that were there, the two girls, the one from the screenshot, 
that said uh mentioned the age difference and like was mentioning how weird it was and then the other girl that was there during the assault that texted me the day after and said are you okay i was really uncomfortable with how touchy george was being those two girls i met two days prior those two girls weren't my friends they were lovely lovely girls yes but i met them two days prior and after vidcon i never spoke to them again my most recent texts from them are after i came out about my story these are people that i had just met um and the both of these girls were uncomfortable with the situa situation but if you're wondering like who you can trust on saying how these people are behind the scenes really acknowledge and really pay attention to the people that are speaking out pay attention to the people that surround them to this day pay attention to the people that haven't spoken out but have distanced themselves and pay attention to the people that are speaking out because i can tell you it's not just me it really isn't and there are other things that have happened but that isn't my story to tell I can only tell so much because those aren't my stories. The three main things I said in my first stream and the three important things in this story, age, power, and consent. Two things, again, he's conveniently not acknowledged or conveniently didn't acknowledge at the time. It's also important to acknowledge this age gap because of the experience gap. Uh, the way that he came out in his video and said what he did to me was tame for him. Um, and how it's something that has affected me so much because it was the first time. You know, if I had the choice of where my first time being sexual or whatever, I would have not picked there. I would have not picked it in front of multiple people. But again, it is important how it was tamed to him, but also the age gap of, you know, if that was tamed to him or if he's done stuff like this before, you think he'd know better. The power imbalance. No, I didn't fucking bring up power and say how I was excited to be there because of his clout. I wasn't fucking using him for his clout. That's not why power is important here. Him going and being like, I feel used. Fucking cry me a river. That's not why I brought up the power. Why power is important in this is because I, I looked up to them. I was an aspiring creator and these were the biggest creators in the industry. Like, I, I, before I started streaming, I watched these people. I watched the Dream SMP, like I did that shit. I looked up to them. I was excited being around them because I was excited to be around such successful people. Not because I only see people for their followers, but because I've, I've looked up to these people. And that's why it's so much more heartbreaking. I mean, being violated is one thing, but who it comes from is also. Also, I stayed silent for so long because I knew how much power they had. I mean, you've seen, there are people to this day that stay silent about their experiences because of what's happening to me right now. You saw what has happened to me since I came out about how smart they are with these situations and how th there's people, there's, there's creators that have messaged me about their stories but say they're still scared to do it. Even the fact of the power in the situation of we have the same fucking Twitch manager. Like, I had so much at cost. I put up with it all. I After it happened, I didn't want it to happen. But, you know, I was just trying to forget about it because we have the same Twitch manager. The reason I was at VidCon in the first place, the reason I got a meet and greet back in TwitchCon and got to meet my viewers for the first time, moments that mean so much to me, was all thanks to my Twitch manager. Without that, I wouldn't be able to do content. I wouldn't be able to continue. And they told me again this they didn't tell me in a malicious or threatening way but i just learned that night again through questions and games we were playing they have the same twitch manager that would do anything for them i mean if i came out about anything i'm not saying they would have used that but i hope you guys would understand how i was in a place of i was scared of their power you know in I acknowledged their power and their fame, not because I was acknowledging them for their numbers and not for who they were as a person, but because I acknowledged no. that my future could be over because of the connections that he they had, the even in my own life, Why like in my own success that I was having as a creator. 
they my biggest you know contributor to that success was someone that they were also tied to and had way more you know say over and also the biggest thing about power in that situation again I, I i had so much at risk i had to suck up what happened to me that's what i'm talking about putting up with it i'm saying that because i didn't want my future at stake because i got assaulted um but also the power that he took by doing it in front of people i'm a very shy person um it's hard for me to say you know to stand up for myself in regular situations but i feel like if that sexual move or you know wanting to take it to the next level if it was done in a private setting maybe i could have mustered up enough courage to say no i'm not comfortable with this or to rip his hand out of my fucking bra but he did it in on a couch with other people sitting next to us and with other people in the room any expression i did anything i did it was on display for other people. He took the power away from me in that situation. And once again, the consent aspect. I understand if you think I'm full of shit. I understand if you don't believe me at all. I understand if those two things you think I'm full of shit about, you know, who cares about the age? Who cares about, you know, the power imbalance in the situation? The consent is always fucking there. He admitted, I never gave verbal consent. Again, the only question he asked is, are you ticklish? I said, fucking no. Like, there was no consent given. It doesn't matter if you're laughing. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter where you are. That is not an invitation. Um, and for everyone saying, well, you could have gave nonverbal consent. I will tell you right now, if I was given the opportunity to give even nonverbal consent, my answer would have always been no. I'm asexual. I don't like sexual stuff. Given the option of doing something sexual, my answer is gonna be no. I'm on the spectrum of asexual, which I don't know if it's because of my bad experiences, but anything sexual makes me extremely uncomfortable. So let's say under the circumstances, I'm drunk and I could have gave nonverbal consent. I would have still said no, non-verbally. However the fuck I could have done that. And again, I'm, I'm fucking drunk. Oh, you were laughing. Oh, you were doing, I'm fucking drunk with my friends. The reason I brought up this entire situation and what I was, I was hoping to bring light to, this wasn't about fucking, this wasn't about him. This wasn't about him. I was trying to bring light to blind idolization. How dangerous it is. Coming from someone who was a viewer, how danger dangerous it is to blindly idolize these people that you don't know. And I always tell my viewers that, to not idolize me to the point of defending me till, like, you die. You know, it's, it's unhealthy. Not everyone is who they seem, and it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's important to swallow it. You know what I mean? Like... And especially in these kind of situations where you're so, you idolize someone to the point of where something bad comes out about them and you just dig for excuses for them. Just so many excuses instead of just accepting it. You know, that's where it gets dangerous. That's where it's dangerous for everyone involved. Again, I know how hard something like this can be to accept. It's like, you know, if your best friend, you know your best friend so much, someone comes to you and says they did something to them. You don't want to believe it because you know your best friend and you don't think they could ever do that. I mean, look at them because you know them so well, except you don't fucking know these people. You, you, you don't know these people. They aren't your best friend. These are, these are people that create content to millions of people. They aren't your best friend. Like, you don't, you don't know who they could be. And again, and that's why I think it's so important. It leaves you in a situation where you're like, well, how can I trust anyone? How can I? It's so important to see the people that do know. These content creators that have spent time with these people, these content creators that do know these people, have had private conversations with these people, speaking out against them. It's so blatantly obvious. These people that have seen them behind the scenes, that have hung out with them, you know, that have distanced themselves since then, or that have spoken out against them. But I was just hoping to open some people's eyes, I guess. And it's definitely a problem bigger than me. This is just about the behind the scenes of this community, you know, and all the people that have fall fallen victim to it. I mean, 
there's so much shit that goes down and I'm just one of the ones that have came out about my story. I don't want to sit here and keep having to prove myself. <laughs> I can't sit here and have to watch his responses and see his face and watch him describe it. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't keep doing this and I'm accepting the fact that uh, maybe, you know, nobody believes me. I'm accepting the fact. I've, I'm accepting it. But also, I feel like, especially in this situation, there's nothing I could say that could change some people's minds. I think, again, because of this idolization, this is how it's dangerous. How, no matter what I say, no matter what proof I come out about, people that don't want to believe will never believe. It's because they don't want to. They will continue to find excuses to not face reality. As for any forgiving or anything, I feel like it's very obvious. I was never in a position to forgive anyone. I didn't go into this wanting to forgive anyone. Um, and again, that is my choice. But especially how I've seen the things play out, the way I've been treated, especially since his responses, I've been belittled, blamed, invalidated, been called a liar, been called Amber Heard, been called any name, even though he sat there and admitted to it. Again, it's not false allegations when I came out about my sexual assault story and he admitted to it. People saying I probably liked it and now I just regret it. I didn't. I'm telling you, I didn't. I, I don't know how loud I have to shout it. And again, I'm asexual. I would have never liked it and then regretted it. I would have never liked it to begin with. I'm trying to tell you this. It's always a she shouldn't have done that. She should have done this. She shouldn't have been wearing that. She shouldn't have done this rather than a simple he shouldn't have done what he did. It's always her fault in these situations and never his for not controlling himself. I don't get it. And I would also like to point out it's not a her and he situation because men get assaulted too, okay? Rules are over. That's assault. Men get assaulted too. It can happen to anyone and that's very real. And that's a conversation that really should be had, uh, but not in this situation. I acknowledge that I was naive, but I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for being naive and not realizing the way the world is sometimes. And the biggest thing that I want to mention and one of the last things is people saying, why did you come publicly about this? Why didn't you keep it private? Because I saw what Shelby did. I saw the effect Shelby had on me. Seeing another content creator, someone I looked up to, speaking out about something that happened, realizing that someone I looked up to went through the same thing as me. You don't understand what that does. You, you, don't, you don't understand how that feels. I wanted to be that for other people. Me staying silent about my situation, who is, the, who is that helping? I understand, oh, it's just bringing up, because if you view it as drama, it is like, oh, why are you bringing this drama forward? But it is, and it's sexual assault. Realizing someone that you watch goes through the same things that you do, it is so healing and it is so eye-opening. And if I could do this all over, I would do it all again. Because the amount of viewers of mine and the viewers that aren't of mine that have reached out to me saying they understand and that they feel safe now to accept what's happened to them. Not even safe to come out about their stories because you don't, you don't have to come out about your story. You don't have to yell it off the rooftops to heal from it, you know? It creates this open discussion of these, these hard things to talk about. That's, that's, that's why I came out about my story, not, not to, and again, I know it sounds hypocritical and that's, I'm acknowledging that and I did things I probably shouldn't have with, with making it this drama kind of thing on Twitter by replying and being, you know, and it's also really fine if you don't understand me, you don't understand why I did, you don't understand why I couldn't have stood up in the moment and ran out of the room. It's fine if you don't understand because the story isn't for you. It was about my journey as a victim. I fully understand not many people to understand that kind of uh, journey. And even if you are a victim and don't understand me, you know, you don't, you don't have to have the same situation to still be a victim. So I understand that as well. My story was meant for people who chose to believe me, not because, you know, of proof or because I have video of it or because of any of that, but because they've experienced it themselves and they recognize it. I feel like the whole situation, the way it played out has been uh, very unfair, but 
what's most unfair is what he did to me in the first place. I'm tired of the constant fight of trying to validate what I went through to validate and prove that I was uncomfortable. Um, I'm tired <laughs> with it all, honestly. But again, I would still do it all over again because um, I don't want people to view that as me like bowing out and, you know, because I bit more than I can chew. I'm still here, but um, I, I'm just not going to apologize what I've went through. That's all, I guess. Goodbye. Stay safe. Heal. So that is most of what Katie said on her stream. If you want to listen to the full hour long version, I will leave it in the description below. Katie Bugs tweets out this stream and captions it by saying, I worded myself poorly, but my final thoughts nonetheless. Brooke responds to Katie by saying, It's not easy to speak as eloquently as everybody would wish when you were talking about your trauma. There is never a perfect victim or a perfect response. I hope that you find healing. Vin says, Your statement is horrible, inconsistent, you faked screenshots and defamed someone. I hope he takes you to court at this point. You are an adult woman! You weren't a child. This isn't SA. Coming from an SA victim. Smaggle responds to Katie by saying, So glad you were finally done with all the not sexual abuse. Mango responds to Katie by saying, I'm confused that you didn't watch George's latest response. Would you consider watching it or reading a transcript? I think a lot of what you mentioned he didn't address, he did address in his response. I'm not sure your friends accurately relayed all the information to you. Genuine. A yup response to Katie by saying, no you didn't. You lied and got caught, and it became clearly that you made the entire shit up. You decided to change the story once again. Kenny quote tweets Katie Bugs and says, if you don't believe me, you're idolizing George. No, it's because you are not actually a victim of anything. Lunar Horrors quote tweets Katie Bugs and says, a lot of what I'm seeing in the replies and quote retweets is exactly what Katie said would happen. People don't watch the VOD all the way through and then they pull out their notes app and find something to pick apart and create drama from. They are literally proving her point. Now the most viral tweet to come out criticizing Katie after her final response stream is from August who tweets out this clip from her stream and says, Katie spoke out twice! She had two different opportunities to say this. First it was, he held my waist. Then, he touched under my shirt. Now, he touched under my bra. This is vital information. Why has the story been changed so many times? It is fucking sexual assault. Okay? I'm not gonna apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching that he is admitting, has admitted to many times, this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did, he felt up my tits. On a couch with other people there, he stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up, fondled, whatever you wanna say, he felt up my tits. Unwanted sexual touch is literally in the definition of sexual assault. It's fucking sexual assault, and I'm never gonna apologize. August follows up their tweet by saying, I know her boobs are under her shirt, but her stomach is there as well. And the fact he went under her bra is an important detail and makes everything more severe. If she said this in the first place, I feel like many people's opinions, including mine, would be different. Veets responds by saying, The story isn't changing. More details are coming out. George himself admitted to putting his hand up her shirt. He did not clarify where. And that is exactly what she is doing. August responds, details that change the severity of the story, that should have been addressed in her first statement. Charlie responds, QUICK! WHAT IS UNDER THE SHIRT?! WHERE DOES THE BRA GO?! August responds, her stomach. Ran responds to August by saying, fundamental misunderstanding of female anatomy. Smitty responds to August's original quote retweet by saying, random people on the internet when they force a girl to give explicit details on something traumatic, that has nothing to do with them. These beef responds to August by saying, so we are dissing her for being touched? Regardless of it being under her shirt or bra, she was still assaulted, and it's been confirmed already. The man is a criminal. Just accept it already. Reason Pete responds to August by saying, yeah, I don't believe her. A Cheeto quote tweets August and says, change the story until the internet is unanimously on your side. Winning strategy. Kavos reacts to August by saying, George not found accuser Katie is back changing her story again, because apparently George now felt up her tit. Seems like a really big detail to leave out of your first two 
to attempts to paint George out as a sexual assaulter, but still, glad to see she beat her sub count for the day. Shibun responds to Kavos by saying, she's an insult to real victims. Me to your response to Kavos by saying, she seems quite happy to be accusing and changing her stories. Nothing about her is honest. Ren quote tweets August and says, Katie has never explicitly said what happened, only that he put his hand under her shirt. And now that she's actually speaking out about what actually happened in detail, y'all call her a liar and wonder why she didn't initially speak out? Destiny quote tweets August and says, how many times does she need to retell this story until it turns into a full gang rape with every person in the room involved, lol. Seven responds to Destiny by saying, she can't let go of the attention. Suit yourself says, fantasy is an amazing thing. Zero X ADA responds to Destiny by saying, why do you have to be so disgusting even when you are correct? Ebroville responds, because it's disgusting that people are praised for fabricating stories. She could have just said the whole situation made her uncomfortable, and upon reflecting, Election, she didn't think she was really ready to be in a potentially sexual situation, and it would have been fine, but no. S.A. Not so erudite quote tweets August and says, I actually can't with the way she has described this. The follower count up on screen, the language she used in the initial story, the heat she's coming with now, this cancelling of George Not Found has got to be one of the worst online mob trial that I have witnessed in a long time. Absolute embarrassment to good work feminism has done in the past in legitimizing victims. Vegan Space responds to August by saying, I always wonder how you people will react when your IRL friends come to you with similar stories. Do you also nitpick every word and point out every little detail over and over again? Would you not show them support no matter what centimeter of their body was exactly touched and how? Irrational Chad reacts to the clip August posted by saying, Jesus Christ, the indignation here is so insane. How can someone act so angry that people are not taking into account details of the assault that have not been mentioned up until now? Kaisa quote tweets August and says, SA, can y'all please think for one moment why a victim wouldn't want to explain every single graphic detail of an assault? The implication were already so clear, yet y'all act like 2 and 2 equaled 5 till now. I do genuinely fear what many of y'all are saying about victims in your own lives acting like this, and I'm aware some of y'all say the same shit about me. Lou responds, they are mad too cause she's smiling. Like how can you not smile out of shock about the utter ridiculousness of the situation you're forced in? Literally, if I don't laugh, I'd cry. Kaisa responds, both in shock and drunk. Smiling is one of the least abnormal reactions in those circumstances to be honest. Willie Macho quote tweets August and says, I have watched a lot of Katie Allegations videos, and this is the first time I've heard her say her boobs were groped. Omni responds to Willie by saying, I must be taking crazy pills, because that's what I thought both of them were alluding to this entire time without saying it. Maury responds to August by saying, Victims don't need to share every intimate detail of their experience in order to be taken seriously. In fact, most SA survivors don't tell the story outright, and often leave out parts they still struggle to talk about or process. Katie, George sexually assaulted me. George. Yeah, I did sexually assault Katie. Dream Team fans. Here is my 100 tweet thread picking apart Katie's claims because clearly George is innocent and did nothing wrong. Karina quote tweets August and says, Katie has said multiple times that he kept raising his hand under her shirt. She didn't change her story. You guys just don't care whatsoever. Flower quote tweets August and says, y'all cannot be this dumb. Her story never changed. Why does she have to go into uncomfortable explicit details for you motherfuckers to believe her? She mentioned it from the start that he touched her inappropriately, and George Not Found confirms this as well. Lorex quote tweets August and says, She said George touched her skin around her waist, slash stomach area, and was inching towards places she didn't want at first. How the fuck did that now get changed into, HE GROPED AND FONDLED MY TITS?! You were telling me I'm supposed to believe that the girl who exaggerated every last word in her first telling, like she was writing a rape fan fiction, conveniently left out the fact that George GROPED HER TITS?! She would have led with that no shot. This reads as a tactic. Bracken responds to Lorix by saying, George already alluded to that. He said he wouldn't go into detail out of respect for Katie. Clarified it was under the shirt touching. George also said it in his first response by saying he moved his hand up after on the waist. I guess George knew she would eventually go into detail, so back up her claims. Which is why he said this. Good move in him to be honest. I just hope people stop acting like this is new info that changed anything. They then share this clip from George's response. She never went into the exact specifics either. So out of respect for Katie, I've chosen not to give any more details than she did to make sure that I'm not airing out any information that she's not comfortable 
with being known. But I have clarified that the furthest things went was under the shirt touching. Lyrix quote tweets Bracken and says, so George does allude to Katie telling the truth that there's something more that she didn't say yet in his response here, just to be clear. So it's 100% possible this did happen. But why the fuck are both of them being so vague? Specifically Katie? Denim's quote tweets August and says, insane that people are debating groping semantics in an attempt to discredit the victim. George admitted to all the details that matter. An 18 year old was invited to get drunk in a hotel room with much larger creators. When she did get drunk, she received unwanted physical touch. Like why are you, a 26 year old man, even inviting 18 year olds to get drunk in your friend's hotel room in the first place? No one had the basic self preservation to check IDs? Nicholas Diorio responds to Denims by saying, groping semantics is when someone gets exposed for lying and then later reveals she omitted the only relevant information from her story. Willie Mac show tweets out, Katie in her first video, I hope this is not a forgiving world because I hope he rots in this world unforgiven. Why can't I experience the world's kindness? Katie in her new video, it was never about canceling George, you're an annoying, huh? Connor responds to Willie by saying, also, I can never do forgiveness. I've been called so many things like Amber Heard. George said that? Or randoms on Twitter. So she can't conceive forgiveness because of what random trolls say? Interesting. Marsh and and responds to Willie by saying, I can't believe people take her seriously. Not only is she clearly trying to cancel him, her story hasn't been consistent and she's left details out to make him look worse. Willie Mac Show continues tweeting about this when he says, Katie could be telling the truth, but she's been so unclear and over the top it's hard to even care. She doesn't show any receipts. I had to put everything, all points of view together. Like girl, it's your allegation. If you're gonna make it public, put in some effort for fuck's sake. Ellie responds by saying, it's gonna suck for her. It's gonna suck for him. Maybe people will learn to go to the police with allegations instead of getting ripped apart in the court of public opinion. Nobody responding to this is qualified to handle it. Willie replies, I don't even expect her to go to the police for this, but she should have made her allegation clear from the beginning. It is a really frustrating dialogue all around. Marley says, Notice how everyone got mad at George for not responding in the time frame he gave, but Katie said she'd respond in one week and took two weeks. Like, hypocrisy at its finest. Nate Allen says, I must say it. When George responded, he was very charitable of Katie. Included receipts and his perspective was nearly the same both vids. Katie, on the other hand, has changed her story many times, even including a potentially fabricated message, while demonizing George entirely. Jess says, If you support George not found after Katie's stream with her final thoughts, I need you to take a long hard look at yourself. She has been ridiculed and bullied all for sharing her story. George admitted that it happened and just tried to pick apart everything. Fuck him. Renegade says, Katie, I'm so sorry, but you were actually just cooked. It has nothing to do with not believing you. It's literally everything else. I honestly feel bad because I know the exact type of male streamer that is going to rip you to shreds over this. Anna says, Katie, I'm sorry, but you can't just sit here and say he admitted to it, implying he admitted to sexually assaulting you. Oh my god. He said he thought it was consensual. You cannot say he admitted to such a crime. Like, come on, bro. This actually makes me mad. Carly says, My theory on what Katie thought was going to happen is she would allude it to being George and use super vague language in her first stream to make it seem like more than what happened did. I think she thought everyone would accuse him and he would never speak about it because he rarely does about controversies and he would just be cancelled without ever talking about it. Now she's dug herself into a hole of lies she can't come back from. Natcat says, as Katie herself just confirmed George did not just tickle her or touch her waist slash stomach. He groped her and felt her up. Bella responds to Nat by saying, I feel like this was a duh moment and now people are saying her story changed. No, she just had to spell it out for you guys because apparently you don't know what up her shirt means. It's literally always been a term for feeling someone up. Vero says, sorry Katie, but you lost me. I will not believe you anymore after all the lies and bringing important stuff later on and not right away to keep this shit going. Like, no. Bluey says, Katie, I didn't realize this situation would get so big. Girl, you accused one of the top Minecraft YouTubers of assaulting you and the top of Minecraft YouTube of enabling it while your friends cheered you on and attacked George when he said he was gonna defend himself. What did you think was gonna happen? Ronnie tweets out, fuck you, Katie. I believed in you and you manipulated me. As a victim, I will only say, fuck you, Katie. She she says, Katie said that she didn't tell her story for the people that don't believe her. She said it was for the victims and how people 
people who didn't believe it at all would never know what it's like to be a victim. I'm gonna cry now. I feel so used, so dumb, manipulated emotionally for a bias. Nep responds to Ronnie by saying, as a victim, proceeds to victim blame, shaking my head. Y'all are trash for using your experience to undermine someone else's, just because your favorite white boy is the abuser. Dust MP3 says, what do you mean Katie didn't watch George's response? She's losing credibility and just insulting actual victims at this point. She's clearly not taking these life ruining accusations as seriously as she should. How are you gonna get your shit straight if you don't look at all the facts? Maggie says, why is she smiling while talking about her assault? Yuki quote tweets Maggie with this clip and says, and also every time she says he admitted a huge smiley is put on her face him admit to it um moon celeste j quote tweets this and says i don't know i think i'd be smiling if my abuser admitted to abusing me 10 workshop responds damn are you kidding i'd be over the moon if mine did theo says i got mine in jail i did more than smile guess i'm a liar too ant tweets out this clip from katie's stream with the caption no go to the police jesus Rep. It is fucking sexual assault, okay? I'm not gonna apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching that he is admitting, has admitted to many times, this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did, he felt up my tits on a couch with other people there. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up fondled, whatever you want to say. He felt up my tits. Unwanted sexual touch is literally in the definition of sexual assault. It's fucking sexual assault, and I'm never going to apologize. Trevor responds by saying, theater kid giving a monologue in class. Captain Poofer says, ah, yes, that time someone touched your belly and you cried rape. Don't worry, Katie. No one will ever touch you again. Robert Boland says, that sounds like a chicken or egg scenario. The police didn't do anything about it when I was abused. Did you tell the police? No, because I already know the police won't do anything. Gabriel reacts to the clip by saying, because if you file a police report and are found to be lying, then you'll be charged for filing a false police report. She wouldn't want that. It's easier to win the court of public opinion when the public is algorithm lobotomized 15 year olds than in a court of law. Nicholas Diorio quote tweets the clip Ant showed and says, this girl's entire thing was wanting to be a voice for victims and she's giving the fucking worst advice laughing my ass off. It's also fucking hilarious Katie is saying this in the same breath where she claims George confessed to a sexual assault in 4k, giving a full confession in his previous response. The young girls she's helping are being told to avoid the police even with a confession on hand. Maybe she should just fuck off? Mama Doll and And responds, the system worked for me when I went to the police. The system works when you use it properly. Juliet quote tweets Ant's clip and says, we all know the justice system is incredibly flawed, especially when it comes to allegations like this, but telling your audience and possible victims that they shouldn't even try to get justice the right way is so irresponsible. And that's about it right now for the discussion online surrounding Katie's final response stream to George Not Found. So for the moment, it looks like this is the end to all the new information we're going to get in regards to George Not Found and Katie. So now that everything is laid out on the table and we heard from hundreds of people's opinions, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this in the comment section below. If more information does come out in regards to this, I will continue updating you guys on this story. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to this channel with notifications on. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.